Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Nicholas Murray, radiologist at Vancouver General Hospital, University of British Columbia in Canada. Uh, today we're going to talk about the traumatic bowel and mesenteric injuries. Specifically, the learning objectives are uh, to recognize the CT signs of traumatic bowel and mesenteric injuries, and of course to recognize the perils and pitfalls in evaluating patients with suspected traumatic bowel and mesenteric injuries. Here's the plan. Uh, we're going to start with a short quiz, five questions uh, quiz. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the findings uh, and I'm going to show different cases to uh, illustrate these uh, CT findings. And we're going to come back at the end with the answers uh, for the initial first uh, five questions. Let's start with a quiz. Question one, um, true or false? All mesenteric and bowel injuries should be evaluated by surgery. True or false? Question two, what is the most sensitive sign for traumatic bowel and mesenteric injuries? Is it A, free air, B, free fluid, C, mesenteric stranding, or D, bowel wall thickening? Question three, which injuries can happen with the lowest force level? Is it the burst injuries, crush injuries, shear injuries, or tensile injuries? Question four, true or false? Free fluid should normally never be seen in male uh, patients. True or false? And last question, number five, which one is not a uh, recognized risk factor for traumatic bowel and mesenteric injuries? Having multiple solid organ injuries, pancreatic laceration, a pre-existing pre -existing Crohn's disease, seatbelt sign or uh, having a vertebral wedge fracture which one is not a risk factor for uh, traumatic bowel and mesenteric injuries first of all i would like to recommend this really good radiographics article published in 2017 uh, multi-detector ct of surgically proven blunt bowel and mesenteric injury um, and uh, a majority of the clinical information i'm going to show you today is from that uh, paper uh, first of all, the bowel and mesenteric injuries are relatively uncommon, happening only in 1-5% to 5 of the uh, trauma cases, most commonly happening after uh, MVC um, accidents. Um, of the, um, there's apparently a greater risk for um, injuries if you're a passenger as opposed to being a driver, and especially if uh, for those uh, in the rear uh, seat. Mesenteric injuries are uh, two to three times more common than bowel injuries. The problem with these is that uh, a delayed diagnosis will usually be associated with increased sepsis, increased uh, number of intraabdominal collections, peritonitis, prolonged uh, ICU and hospital stay, bowel stricture, and of course, overall increased mortality. And the challenges with bowel and mesenteric injuries, it's first that it's, it's not common. It's usually associated with multiple concomitant or concurrent injuries on a really busy scan. The mesentery is an undefined organ, so you cannot follow its contour. Uh, the bowel is also a really long and torturous organ, which is also mobile, and the injury, injuries can happen or can involve multiple segments. And on top of that, usually the findings are quite subtle on imaging. The bowel injuries will uh, most commonly affect the small bowel in 67% uh, 60 of, uh, of the time, followed by the colon in 20% and duodenum in 8%, and less commonly will involve the appendix, stomach, and uh, rectum. Uh, the CT diagnosis of TBMI is um, it presents a, a relatively variable sensitivity and specificity uh, between 80 to 95 percent and 50 to 99 percent respectively. Uh, the non-recognized TBMI will be the most common, the most frequent cause of delayed laparotomy after trauma and the uh, diagnostic delay will have a significant impact on prognos uh, prognosis and mortality, uh, especially if the, the, the diagnosis is delayed by more than 24 hours. And uh, usually the questionable radiologic or uh, clinical findings should be closely observed and uh, repeat CT should be recommended in uh, uh, 24 to 36 hours uh, with oral contrast administration and a repeat CT can alter management in up to
three types of mechanisms can cause bowel uh, injuries, uh, specifically the shearing injuries associated with rapid deceleration, and the shearing forces will be more pronounced at the location where the bowel is fixed, especially uh, at the ligament of strides, at the ileocecal valve, and also uh, at the uh, sigmoid colon junction. The crush injuries on the other side will be associated with compression of the small or large bowel uh, against any uh, solid structures, for example, the bone structures. Usually most commonly associated with seed bell across the abdomen and uh, or, for example, the impact against the steering wheel or the dashboard. Uh, the burst uh, injury, uh, finally, are associated with an increased intraluminal pressure that will cause perforation of the bowel. And this can cause uh, multiple uh, perforations, uh, sometimes called the Swiss cheese appearance. The risk factors for that, having a pre-existing ileus obstruction or inflammatory bowel disease. And uh, these burst injuries can occur with a relatively less force than other mechanisms and they are less likely to be associated with other uh, injuries, for example. Not all TBMI uh, injuries are sig surgically significant. For example, if you have an isolated uh, mesenteric hematoma with stranding or an isolated uh, mural hematoma without any active bleeding, those are usually uh, managed conservatively. On the other side, it, the significant uh, injuries will be the full thickness bowel perforation, the complete serosomuscular tear, a uh, specific type of degloving injury of the bowel, a devascularized bowel segment, a disrupted uh, mesentery, a, a mesenteric injury with secondary ischemic changes within the bowel uh, loops, or active extravasation of contrast uh, within the mesentery. Those are usually uh, managed with uh, surgery. Uh, different signs and symptoms have been described with bowel and mesenteric injuries and usually we uh, characterize those as uh, being direct or indirect signs of injuries and we'll go through those, these uh, signs one by one to show you some examples as well and discuss a little bit more about the specificity sensitivity of uh, these findings on CT uh, imaging. The, uh, first of all, the, the direct signs of bowel injuries. If you have a discontinuous bowel wall, that's usually extremely specific, uh, but however, poorly sensitive. It's not common that we see a complete discontinuity of the bowel wall, especially because sometimes the defects are really small and usually difficult to identify on CT imaging. Free air is also considered really highly specific. Uh, but keep in mind that there's some pitfalls. Uh, you can get free air if you have uh, a pneumothorax tracking down the abdominal level. You can uh, be secondary to a chest tube placement, um, a diaphragmatic injury as well, a penetrating abdominal wall trauma. Um, if it's because uh, uh, the air can come from the outside of the patient and track. Uh, within the peritoneal cavity. Similarly, a rupture of the bladder with a fully catheter in place may cause uh, a uh, pneumoperitoneum. Um, air can also be isolated to the space between the abdominal wall and the peritoneal space, uh, which is sometimes called the uh, pseudo-pneumoperitoneum. And keep in mind that uh, you may not have any free air even if the bowel is perforated. Uh, for example, in case where the bowel was initially collapsed uh, before the injury or if it was only containing uh, fluid in that segment. But however, if you see free air with one of these signs, being free fluid, the seat belt sign or a focal bowel injury, that is usually highly predictive for bowel injury. But however, again, uh, with a relatively low uh, sensitivity. Extravasation of oral uh, contrast um, is again highly specific, but usually in the trauma setting, uh, the uh, CT examination will be done without uh, oral contrast unless there's a specific clinical indicator that uh, and the clinical team will uh, suspect a bowel injury because usually this will delay uh, the uh, initial acquisition of the uh, examination. Let's look at this first uh, interesting case. That's an 18-year-old female who was involved in a moderate speed MVC, uh, but keep in mind that she had a large meal just before the accident. 
as you probably saw on the CT, there's a lot of free air and free fluid uh, within the intraperitoneal cavity. And uh, in addition, the stomach is extremely uh, distended by a uh, really heterogeneous content. And the content within the stomach and outside the stomach is of similar attenuation. In addition, you have a direct signs of uh, bowel perforation where a large gap is seen uh, in the proximal aspect of the lesser uh, curvature of the stomach. Uh, on uh, surgery, the patient had a large gastric perforation that was uh, primarily repaired. In direct signs of bowel injury, you have to look for uh, the, uh, the bowel wall enhancement. If it's abnormal, it will usually be associated with 90% specificity for diagnosis of um, bowel injury. But keep in mind that the shock bowel can give you abnormal uh, enhancement, but it, it's usually more diffuse within the abdomen. And look for the associated signs of a flattened IVC and uh, abnormal increased adrenal enhancement. A second sign that has been described is the Yanis sign, where you can see uh, within a same bowel segment an area of normally enhancing and abnormally enhancing bowel loop and uh, such as in the, this example here where the um, abnormal bowel wall enhancement is just close to uh, the area of a normal enhancement. Uh, for example, in this case of a 25-year-old male patient who was involved in an MVC, a lot of uh, vascular injuries uh, within the uh, abdomen uh, with a small area of active extravasation, fat stranding as well here. And if you look on the coronal plane, you have two adjacent small bowel loops, one being abnormally uh, IPO-enhancing compared to the normal bowel loop adjacent to it. And uh, using dual energy CT, you can highlight this uh, difference in attenuation or enhancement by uh, uh, loading up your iodine overlay maps. And you see that there's a relative lack of iodine within the involved bowel loop. And this difference in attenuation is also exaggerated at low KEV imaging, uh, in this case 40 KV compared to the regular 120 KVP imaging uh, normally obtained in uh, trauma uh, cases. Uh, for suspected bowel uh, injuries, look also at the bowel wall thickening. Abnormal thickening has a specificity of 90% for bowel wall injury, although not really uh, sensitive. Uh, keep in mind these numbers, but they are uh, relative numbers of thickness for the small bowel up to 3 millimeters and greater than 5 millimeters for uh, the colon may be associated with injury, but there's a broad differential. Again, look um, uh, to see if, if the, the involvement is more focal, which can suggest a contusion or a bowel wall hematoma, or if it's more diffuse. And in this case, al uh, also keep in mind the shock bowel uh, appearance. Uh, free fluid, uh, that's uh, the f most common, the most sensitive sign of bowel wall injury present in more than 90 to 100 percent of the cases, but again, extremely non-specific. Important fact to remember, up to 3 to 5 percent of the male patients may have a small amount of uh, simple pelvic free fluid, usually associated with the aggressive IV uh, repletion. And um, you have to evaluate the amount of fluid, but also the attenuation. If it's simple, it's less concerning. If the attenuation is higher than 20, 25, 30 HU, then you're suspecting more blood in this case, which is more indicative of a bowel uh, or mesenteric injury, uh, if there's no other solid organ injury. Um, in a uh, paper published in 2013, um, um, there was a mention that even a minimal amount of free fluid can be relevant depending on the location, especially if it's in the interloop uh, region between the bowel loops or uh, if it's intra versus retroperitoneal for specific uh, bowel segments, um, as you probably uh, know. Uh, indirect signs for bowel injury, look at the mesenteric stranding, not really specific uh, and not really sensitive as well, more intermediate in, in, in both sensitivity and specificity. Uh, and you know this sign, you just have to look for the stranding within the mesenteric fat. Um, 
keep in mind that some pre-existing uh, medical conditions can uh, cause stranding such as the, the typical paniculitis or a prior uh, trauma or infarction um, can also give you this appearance. Case number two, let's look at this 26-year-old uh, female patient who was stabbed uh, in the left anterior abdomen. In this case, you also have multiple signs of uh, bowel injury. First of all, you have uh, the surrounding fluid uh, adjacent to the really thickened proximal small bowel loop, which is also distended, uh, containing fluid and uh, a hyperdense content, suggesting suggestive of blood in this case. In addition, you have a small focus of hyperattenuation, uh, indicative of an area of active extravasation of contrast, and you have also a focal area of abnormal bowel wall enhancement with a transmural um, a defect suggestive of a penetrating injury. And that was also better seen on the coronal and sagittal images where you have your uh, focus of active extravasation of contrast within uh, your area of transmural um, uh, bowel wall defect. Uh, case number three, 25 year old male patient uh, was stabbed in the uh, anterior abdomen on the left side of midline. So in this case, uh, you have your uh, stab wound in the uh, uh, left anterior abdomen where a skin defect is seen and a partial herniation of a short segment of small bowel. In addition, you have on the second image um, an area of uh, interloop free fluid identified by this uh, yellow arrow. Um, some of the, in fact, the herniated bowel loop appears relatively unremarkable. But if you look at a close by bowel loop on the first image here, this one looks a bit more heterogeneous and you have difficulty identifying the uh, mucosal and mural enhancement compared to the adjacent uh, small bowel loops. And um, uh, further reformats using dual energy CT, you can confirm that there's a relative lack of iodine uptake within the uh, affected bowel loop. And in fact, we also have a small focus of uh, extravasation of contrast uh, showing that this uh, red dot within the bowel lumen here, and this case was confirmed to uh, represent a transmural um, uh, uh, injury to the small bowel loop here on uh, surgery. So uh, teaching points to remember, bowel injuries can be extremely subtle, so we have to pay attention to your case carefully, uh, and sometimes it's almost impossible to identify a bowel injury on CT. Keep in mind that the bowel is a mobile organ and the herniated bowel loop might not be the injured one. Other indirect signs of bowel injury, the associated CT findings. So if you have a chance fracture, you have a higher likelihood of having a bowel injury, especially involving the duodenum and a small bowel. Having multiple organ injuries is a significant risk factor for TBMIs. For example, uh, you can have up to 30 Four percent of bowel injury if you have more or three or more uh, solid organs that are injured uh, on the CT scan. As you may probably know, pancreatic injuries are highly associated with duodenal injuries in 20% of the cases, and having a seat belt sign uh, on clinical examination or even on CT, uh, such as in this case here, uh, has a significant um, likelihood of being associated with bowel injury in up to 30% of the cases. Other uh, indirect signs, uh, the wound track or the continuous injury uh, sign, if you have extension of a wound track on both sides of a bowel loop with fluid on one side and or stranding on the other side, then the likelihood of the bowel loop being injured is quite high. Uh, some less common signs have been described as well in the context of trauma, such as bowel intersusception, um, and it's, it's, it's unclear why you, uh, this may be associated with trauma to the bowel loops, but um, uh, proposed etiologies have uh, 
uh, been suggested, such as uh, the associated spasm, bowel wall edema, or abnormal peristalsis. And finally, extremely rare, you may have crush compression of the appendix against the iliac crest, which can cause secondary post-traumatic appendicitis. Let's look at this uh, case 5, 27 year old male patient who was stabbed multiple times in the abdomen. As you can see on the CT, with uh, all these stab wounds identified with uh, paper clips. This is a perfect example to show uh, the relative limitations of CT in, the, in diagnosing uh, TBMI. In this uh, uh, case, multiple stab wounds were noted in the right upper quadrant, although even in retrospective, no, uh, absolutely no injuries were noted in the uh, gastric wall. However, at surgery, a large gastric perforation uh, was noted and primarily repaired. If we move on to the mesenteric injuries, uh, we have the first the direct signs. If you see vascular bleeding within the mesenteric uh, vessels, that is usually associated with a quite high specificity of injuries. Um, abrupt termination, of course, again, really high specificity uh, with the, um, uh, mesenteric injuries. However, sensitivity is quite low for both of these signs. Uh, so, uh, bleeding and um, uh, a complete lack of opacification of a uh, mesenteric branch are usually better uh, seen on the reconstructed MIP images uh, to see the full length of uh, the involved vessel in one plane. Uh, active extravasation of contrast on the other side is extremely specific. Uh, if you see active extravasation of contrast, it's usually a, the strongest indicator of a surgically significant injury within the mesentery. On the other side, the indirect signs uh, having a mesenteric hematoma, quite specific, mesenteric stranding, not really specific and not really uh, sensitive, as I said before. Uh, Pre-existing pre conditions such as mesenteric paniculitis can give you the same appearance, so again, not really specific for uh, a traumatic injury to the bowel or mesentery. Um, free fluid. As we said, it's also extremely sensitive, but not specific. And if you have um, secondary changes within the uh, the bowel um, drained or um, uh, supplied by the uh, uh, mesenteric uh, region, then you have a high likelihood of having a mesenteric uh, injury as well. Case number seven. This is a 58-year-old male patient was involved in the high-speed MVA. So in this case, you have uh, the perfect example of a slam dunk uh, mesenteric injuries with uh, mesenteric hematoma, active extravasation of contrast, and even fat stranding. The uh, bowel loops within the involved segments are abnormal with surrounding stranding and um, also a mild wall thickening. And these findings are highly positive, highly uh, significant for a, um, both the mesenteric and bowel injuries that should be uh, managed uh, surgically. Case number six, uh, this was a more uh, trickier case. A 28-year-old uh, male patient was involved in a work-related accident when a 350-pound block fell on his body. So this case demonstrated a few splenic lacerations with a uh, moderate amount of complex free fluid within the abdomen, uh, mainly surrounding the spleen, the liver, and within the pericardial gutter, also of course extending into the pelvis. However, on the initial CT report, uh, there was no uh, mention of any bowel injuries, uh, but however, later on the same day, the patient, the patient was rushed to the OR for an abdominal compartment syndrome. At surgery, uh, the trauma team found a huge uh, laceration, transmural laceration involving the mesentery, extending from the bowel to the root of the mesentery, and that's a, just a surgical gastro in the uh, through and through uh, perforation of the mesentery here. Uh, 
in a retrospective analysis, especially using the dual energy CTI Dyn overlay map, pay attention to the uh, interloop free fluid, also retroperitoneal free fluid, and hematoma that will be shown uh, on this examination. Looking retro retrospectively at this CT angiogram study of the abdomen, uh, if you focus on the left side of the abdomen, you'll see that there's a short segment of occluded SMA branch. Uh, that can be seen on the axial images, however, way better seen on the coronal MIP images, uh, especially since it's occluded from the origin. So it's hard to follow a vessel that is occluded right from the, 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 the origin. As you can see here, uh, this small SMA branch is occluded right from the beginning and showing poor uh, distal pacification, uh, really asymmetric compared to the other branches, better seen on this MIP uh, reconstructions. And just selected images of the same case here showing uh, the um, uh, occluded SMA branch. And in retrospective, you could probably see that the mesenteric fat here is disrupted in two uh, pieces with a transmural uh, mesenteric defect here that was uh, later on seen on, uh, at surgery. So if we come back to the quiz, um, First question was, true or false, all mesenteric and bowel injuries should be evaluated by surgery? And the answer is false. Uh, of course, isolated bowel wall uh, or mesenteric hematoma without any active extravasation of contrast or secondary ischemic changes, changes within the bowel loops are usually conservatively managed. Question two was, what is the most sensitive sign for traumatic bowel and mesenteric injuries? And the answer was free fluid. Really common in mesenteric injuries in 90 to 100% of the cases. But again, pay attention to the density, if it's simple in attenuation or if it's hemorrhagic in attenuation, and also the location. Uh, interloop free fluid is way more sensitive than uh, dependent pelvic free fluid for mesenteric injuries. Question number three, which uh, injuries can happen with the lowest force level? You remember that it's the burst injuries uh, with associated less uh, forces needed to uh, injure the bowel uh, compared to the other cross shear or tensile injuries. Question number four, uh, true or false? Free fluid should normally never be seen in male patients. It's false. It can be seen in up to 3 to 5% of the male patients, secondary to the aggressive IV or, uh, hydration. Keep in mind, again, the density and the location of the fluid. Uh, usually, um, the, the fluid should be seen within the pelvis and not, for example, uh, in the interloop space. And last question, uh, which one is not a risk factor for traumatic bowel and mesenteric injuries? And the answer was the vertebral wedge fracture. Uh, it's a more the chance fracture that is a risk factor for bowel injuries. But all the other ones, the solid, having multiple solid organ injuries, pancreatic laceration, pre existing IBD, such as Crohn's disease, and the seed vessel sign will all be associated with the TBMI. So, in summary, TBMI can be very subtle on CD, sometimes impossible to diagnose if you remember the case of uh, gastric perforation after uh, stabbing uh, injuries. Also, the herniated bowel loop might not be the injured one, so pay attention to the nearby uh, bowel loops. Pneumoperitoneum is not specific to bowel injuries. Keep in mind some differential diagnosis. Specific injuries are associated with TBMI. Evaluation of the mesenteric branches on CT is essential and use the coronal NPR and MIP formats to evaluate for uh, vascular injuries. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you appreciated the lecture. Here are some references if you uh, want to read further about bowel and mesenteric injuries.